Well, I made it back out to Black Point and um, the first week of uh, January. And uh, pretty much what I saw the, the month before. You know, it's not much of anything going on. The good news is the water is clear and you're starting to see a few little sprouts of um, seagrass starting to pop up a little bit. But uh, now I got about, this is the third year that I've had the cameras down and I'm starting to see a pattern. If you look at it, this is this year now. We're going to go to a year ago, see what it looks like. There really is not much difference. And a year after that, not much difference again. Um, it's kind of interesting because it starts off in January and the grass starts to grow and grow and grow. And it gets to uh, June and July. And here's some scenes from uh, June and July of previous years. And you'll notice uh, the grass seems to be coming back good. So what happens to the grass? It's usually when we get into August and September and uh, October, those months there is when the grass disappears. Now, it could be several things that I see. One is the storms. The rainy season comes in there, is flushing all the water out from the local canals, ditches, and everything else gets washed out. Theory is the Roundup and stuff that they use in there gets washed out and kills the grass. That's one theory that I have. Another theory is I see a lot of manatees at that point in time. Herds of manatees come up on the grass flats and feed heavily on that and they can wipe out an entire area of grass. Or it could be a seasonal thing where grass grows, you know, and then dies off. You know, it'll grow starting in winter time. It grew through summer, and then once the fall comes, dies off and then goes away. The only thing is, is that if you look at the flats here on Black Point, not only does the grass die off, everything dies off. The grass, the um, algaes, uh, anything else that may be growing in there is gone. So it's not just one grass, you know, it's not just one grass that's growing here out on the flats. It's all kinds of vegetation that is growing. And, you know, come, you know, the end of fall, there's nothing left. Nothing left. So, you know, after three years of shooting these videos, I think I got more questions than answers. But, um, you know, hopefully um, just keep putting the cameras down. And yes, I do need to expand to different other areas of the lagoon. And I'm looking at that right now. Um, but uh, this is Pete Hink. We're going to put the cameras down next month in February. Hopefully we see an increase. And I believe that there will be an increase in the seagrass. And I think by May and June, hopefully with luck, it'll be looking good. Good news is there's a lot more people involved in what's going on in the lagoon and about the seagrass, the oysters, and the clams. And we're starting to see a lot of local governments getting more involved. I know Indian River County has done a lot of good things here lately, you know, banding uh, a lot of the spraying of these weed killers. And uh, Sebastian's starting to work on that too. So I'm starting to see a lot of good things come out of it and hopefully... You know, it's going to take years to really to clean up the lagoon, but hopefully if we stay diligent and keep fighting this and, you know, looking for the right ways to do things. And that's that's very important and very important that we just don't jump at something without having science to back it up and having true science to back it up. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. This is a year that we're going to see, I think, the best improvement in the lagoon, I hope. And... Um, I think we keep fighting and we keep fighting for it. It will happen. So this is Pete Hink. Till next time, we'll see you.